Hey guys, Tayo here. So today I had the opportunity to try the Vive Cosmos, the latest VR headset from HTC. And well, I'm here to tell you my first impressions. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, if it's first time hearing about it, Vive Cosmos is the last headset, of course, from HTC and Vive, the creators of the Vive headset, the Vive Pro, the Vive Focus, the Vive Focus Plus, and now the Vive Cosmos. Uh, what is particular about the Vive Cosmos? Well, uh, the company here is really pushing and focusing on the ease to use, uh, the way to introduce new people to VR, and this is done through hardware and software. And how we're gonna go through it? Well, uh, through the most important things that we always talk about it in the VR headset. There's gonna be the comfort, that is gonna be the visual, that is gonna be the controllers. I asked about the batteries, by the way, and the tracking, of course, because these headsets use inside-out tracking. That means that you don't need external sensors anymore, you don't need lighthouses and stuff like that but everything is contained with the different cameras. Now let's start with the comfort. That is something that I wanna put first, uh, not just because of the Northern fame, but it's something that really impressed me the most about these headsets. And it actually feels pretty light. It's all in plastic and I like the blue color that we had also before with the Vive Pro, they kind of kept it so uh, you don't have the usual black VR headset. Not that it's changed much when you are in VR, but well, it's nice to see it and put it on the shelf in that way. This is my opinion. And it uses a Nalo style design. That's similar to the PSVR or the Oculus Rift Test lately or other Windows Mixed Reality headsets. And talking about some similarities with the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, actually is the fact that you can flip up the screen. And I have to say something about this because in Windows Mixed Reality, there was a weird situation where the, it wasn't going up and up, and so they were like on your line of sight, the VR headset, so it wasn't that useful. Here instead, they worked a lot, seems like on the Halo style, to make the balance a little better in a way that it's gonna go up more and stay up, and you're gonna have a, a kind of a free side of visual. It's very, very nice. Also, the padding on the forehead is very big, so I don't think that if you had problem in the past with the forehead getting numb for these Halo style design headsets, you're gonna have the same problem. Of course, I tried it for around 15 minutes, so I can't really tell you about the long terms in there, but it's something that we're gonna talk about in the full review when I'm gonna receive it for sure. Also, all the paddings around the headset are replaceable, so you're gonna be able to just wash them without any problem or wipe it down because the material let you do it without any problem. Also, also some inspiration I probably took from the Oculus Rift test, there's a little strap on top that helps to balance even better the headset and there's something that I really like and I feel that more Halo style design should have the little strap on top because it really helps a lot in comfort. Now, uh, wearing it for like those 15, 20 minutes, I really forgot that it was on my head. First impression completely positive and for sure I want to try more to see uh, if it's gonna stay in that way. Light bleeding, by the way, so the light's coming from the external. I didn't see it that much. So very good experience on the term comfort for my first impression, for sure. Okay, but now let's talk about another very important thing that is the visual. Here we have LCD display, 2880 by 1700 pixel. RGB pixel arrangement, so that means that we have three sub pixels every pixel, and that's very, very nice because the clarity is very high. It works at 90 Hz, has pretty good color, accurate. Now, I saw worse blacks, to be honest, like the Rift S, so the blacks were pretty good in here. Even if it's not an AMOLED, it's never gonna be at the level of the OLED in terms of blacks. Uh, but very pleased by the image so far. The only thing I saw still some glares and some god rays with the lenses. There are very similar lenses, probably the same of the Vive Pro and the original Vive. They said that they're a little better. And of course, to expect it through the lenses video when it arrives, so we can compare it with the Vive uh, Pro, with if we compare it with the Index or whatever you guys want to compare it with the Pimax, because here we have a very high resolution. And that means that you're gonna be able to see more in the distance, where the FOV is actually 110 degrees. So it's pretty much the same of the original Vive and the Vive Pro probably a little less, maybe for the fact that you can't really get those lenses very, very close to your eyes because it doesn't have the same adjustments that the 
Vive Pro or the original Vive Edge and you have the IPD adjustment. So uh, if you're one of those people that can't use the Rift Desk because of the IPD adjustment, well, uh, you got a solution over there. Now let's talk about controllers because of course those are an important part of this headset and these controllers are very particular. It's very nice the tribal that they have going on on top that use for the tracking because the six cameras on the headset are gonna use that to understand the position. They have a good weight. Uh, it's very, very nice to keep them. They're very ergonomic. They have two triggers, one of like the shoulder button. Why it is there? Because they won't be able just to give the possibility to the devs to use it. Also like uh, if you compare it to a gamepad, so it makes sense. But if you, your games doesn't use it, well, something that you're not gonna have to use. So it doesn't get in the way. It's probably nice to have an additional button in there. The only thing is the grip button is still a button and it's not analogic, so it doesn't feel like the Rift one or is not capacitive like the one on the index. Such a particular choice, but maybe because they want to keep uh, the same thing like it was with the Vive Wands, for example, they had just a button in there. As I said, they're comfortable, the thumbstick is pretty big and that's nice, and then you have two buttons each controllers that are in B, so uh, you can control the different stuff in the games. Very similar to the one from the Oculus Rift. And as I said, I see it really like a positive thing because that means that for devs, it's gonna be easier to port their game also to Viveport, for example, and use it natively with these controllers. And that's very, very nice for sure. I, of course, asked about the battery life because from some leaks, it seems it's gonna be two hours. Uh, they didn't tell me anything yet. Probably they're gonna say something in the future. Uh, of course, I'm gonna tell you as soon as possible. What we know so far, we have two batteries in there, like it happens in Windows Mixed Reality. And what I can see is that controllers are turning off very fast if you don't touch them. So probably that's the way they're trying to uh, get a better battery life. I really hope I'm gonna have some news for you as soon as possible. And then at the end, talking about the audio is similar to the Lux Audio Strap. They said that it's the best audio they ever had. I didn't have the opportunity to try in some games where you really rely on the audio. There was like a little audio experience. Uh, so far, they were sounding very similar to the Lux Audio Strap. I can wait to try more, of course. They also feel and look like the Lux Audio Strap. And I love the Lux Audio Strap. I always suggest that also for different headsets like the Pimax. So, uh, if they are to the same level or even better, well, just better, why not? And to finish, let's talk about tracking because there's a lot to talk about it. Uh, as I said before, they use six cameras for the tracking, one on the top, one on the bottom, one, two on the front, one on the right and one on the left. Uh, I try to go a little crazy with the controllers and with the ad. Uh, the tracking is there, it was pretty well for uh, the ad. For the controllers, going very fast, I saw some snaps. Uh, but nothing major, we are used to it when it comes to inside-out tracking. Now, the thing about the inside-out tracking, having a lot of camera, they can rely on more data. And so if they update the software and everything, the tracking would be get better and better like we got on the Oculus Rift test. For now, I have to say that like, there was no vibrating controller, something like that. Everything was just working. I feel it's gonna be completely enjoyable to use. I saw, of course, some uh, loss of tracking went very close to the camera, but uh, that always happened with the inside out tracking headset. And well, guys, this was all. Uh, if you have any other question, please let me know in the comment below, uh, write them down there so we can talk about it. I, I will try to answer as soon as possible, as much as possible, because now I'm here. It's gonna be tomorrow, the event from Oculus with the keynote, so I'm gonna update you guys about that as well. And I'm gonna be able to have the opportunity to try probably the Unreal uh, AR headset, that something that I'm really interested in, because it's a very small footprint AR headset. Uh, for now, really, um, if you have any concern, if you have any question about the Vive Cosmos, let me know. As always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, just like. Subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech and for all the coverage from OC6, of course, and the future uh, for the Vive Cosmos, the True the Lenses, and everything like that. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching.